Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to The Brian Diaries, where my pals and I get together and talk about subjects dealing with our favorite tabletop role-playing setting, The World of Darkness. While we may not be subject matter experts on the game lines, we have a passion that has led us to create and share actual plays with you all. Eventually we thought, well shit, we might as well take a stab at a podcast, and here you go. Each episode, we will have a guest content creator to join us to talk about whatever subject is on the table. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach out to us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. So here we go. I hope you enjoy. What the fuck is up, bold crew? Holy shit, I am fucking fired up. I've only taken two sips of my starbucks cold brew coffee right now and i'm already fired up i feel bad for you listeners because here i'm gonna be banging my head against my microphone soon what is up andrew how goes it man uh trying to catch up to you holy crap yeah yeah well let's not pretend like you're not living fast and recklessly man i mean you know i I already kind of hinted i was gonna fucking lead in with your whole motley crew fucking story that you had the other day going to work man for all you who don't know who've been listening i've been trying to get andrew here to become a cold brew junkie like i i mean i've been preaching the good fucking word when we throw on our black robes and do our black mask to the dark gods i'm always a hey bro you should try some cold brew and he just tells me to shut the fuck up and pay attention and but so he finally started listening and i don't know if for your, those of you who may know Andrew personally and know him on Facebook, <laughs> where are you going with this, Chris? <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. The other morning, and this is kind of real life shit. This isn't me fucking being fucking uh, strung out on coffee, but really, I had a scare, man, because I woke up the other morning and I saw that my fucking buddy had a car accident, dude, and fucking hydroplaned and flipped his goddamn Toyota Corolla. Now, I personally think he was probably blaring out to Motley Crue and doing cocaine and cold brew, man, because, you know, this podcaster life, we just live like that, but really, in but real not. life. No, but not. in actuality, just... <laughs> I was listening to Nathan and 25 years of Masquer- Vampire the Masquerade at the time, and it was just really surreal to be upside down on the side of the highway in a foot of freezing cold water as uh, Nate and Bob talked about, uh, you know, dark secrets of thaumaturgy. That, that's pretty eerie, man, because like I could just like imagine like how discombobulated I'd be being like upside down. Not knowing what happened, and then hearing two guys like talking about Vampire the fucking Masquerade, dude. I don't I'm know. Did calmly you do and <laughs> I'm surrounded calm. by all this chaos. And, and it was uh, on a fucking freeway, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, surreal. Um, and we actually have him on today as our guest. So, yeah, welcome. yeah. Welcome. Welcome. What is up, man? No, I'm, I was just like sitting here, and I was I was listening to you talk about being in your car upside down on the freeway and i don't know that i'm comfortable with anybody hearing my voice is the last thing that they hear (laughs) that's a little frightening (laughs) like beyond just the fact that obviously you have a crazy wreck uh thankfully i'm all right uh and it was not the last thing i heard obviously still being here but uh (laughs) no it was close it was very close well well that's crazy so I, I, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad everything turned out all right. Yeah, it was kind of fucking funny because uh, Nate commented on some picture on our in- IG, on our Instagram, like all the cool kids do, man. And fucking, I was like, dude, you got to like remind me to tell a fucking story like that's going to creep you the fuck out about your show. And and then I had thought about it. I'm like, man, maybe I should ask like Andrew's permission if it's okay to bring this up. So I asked him and he's like, I don't give a shit. Go ahead. And I'm like, all right. So nate man tell us a little bit about yourself tell us about not like you have to introduce yourself i said this last episode when we told people you were going to be on that there really is no point in introducing you because people should know about you but in case they haven't tell us about Uh, yourself and your stuff well uh i am a podcaster i I do a podcast called uh, 25 years of vampire the masquerade um i've been doing it for about two years with uh my good buddy bob and um, we go over all the different um, releases of Vampire the Masquerade. We started with the very first book, and we've just gone through the entire uh, line of, of books, for the most part, um, in order of their release. And um, before that, we were just kind of like doing a pop culture podcast that nobody listened to. And we've been doing that one for about three years. Um, 
yeah, I'm a lifelong nerd, metalhead, music guy, um, into movies. Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, I could go on and on, but what would be the point? <laughs> I highly recommend people check out their podcast because uh, it's it's something to die for. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Was that a fucking pun? Because it sounds like a pun, dude. Really do not get in car accidents. Really yeah, do not joke. get in car accidents intentionally while listening to 25 years of Vampire Masquerade. It's not cool. Andrew's not cool, but I'm glad he's alive. And it sounds like a Motley Crue story, really. I kind of just imagine him like being up all night on cold brew and cocaine and having like a mullet and rocking out to like uh, kickstart my heart. And it's pretty, uh, pretty, mundane. pretty mundane, pretty yeah. mundane, just going to work and just having, mm. you know, the soothing voices of these two guys, just like, it's pretty cool, pretty cool well, podcast. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad that we can lull you into a, a false sense of security while you drive on the highway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you have another new podcast that you just started recently, right? Yeah, uh, I do it with uh, with my lady friend, Rachel. It's called Playing Hooky Podcast. And we basically each bring one of our own pop culture like preferences, something that we really enjoy that the other hasn't been exposed to. And we kind of, we go, all right, well, this week you get to read this book and this week I get to watch this movie. And then we get together afterwards and we talk about like our... Um, you know, our responses to it. Um, we just did one about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I had not ever seen. I was not a fan of. I didn't particularly care for. So I got to sit down and watch a couple of key episodes and then kind of come to the table and share my thoughts about it and and then talk about it like that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a relatively new thing, and um, it's something that we're both pretty uh, pretty hyped about, and hopefully people like it. That sounds like a really fascinating way to get to know a person. So, so the thing for me was that, you know, you're, you're always like, you hear about people that are in relationships and they're like, oh, he's into like Warhammer and I'll never, uh, you know, that's, that's crazy dorky stuff. And I, I've always been like, well, why wouldn't you bring the stuff that kind of like moves you into the relationship and try to share it instead of like having these crazy separate things, like bring them to the table and enrich the other person's life because it's enriched yours. So that's, that's, I think the point, you know, she's really into Star Trek and I was like, what's the Star Trek stuff? I don't know anything about it. And instead of being like, man, that's your crap. I was like, well, I want to know, I want to know what makes you happy because it could make me happy too. So that's, that's really the goal. I think gaming for us is all about bringing people together and, and pop culture is all about bringing people together. And we kind of live in a time where people use pop culture and anything that they can find to separate each other. And I'm just not okay with that. Like we should all kind of come together and share our, our, you know, what brings us, you know, what makes us the same instead of what makes us different. So if she brought a Nickelback CD and she said she wanted you to listen to Nickelback, would you, would you do that? Cause that's a true test of love right there, man. Well, luckily <laughs> that, I'm discerning enough that I, I wouldn't ever date someone who was into Nickelback. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer. Uh, but for real, I fucking man, I discovered 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade right at that key moment, man, like where I think we'd only been doing like Twin Cities by Night for like four or five months. And I was like rediscovering um, Vampire the Masquerade. And I, w I mean, like I kind of. I had been into it like 15 years before, but I wasn't back then. I didn't know shit about the internet and I just kind of grabbed what books I could. And, you know, I didn't really take like a deep, deep, deep dive. And so when I kind of like fell in love with those games, I started collecting again was when you guys started 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade, man. And I just felt like, I, I mean, I remember I was driving to my buddy Brendan's Giovanni Chronicles game. He lives on the other side of Phoenix where, where I live and it's about an hour drive. And I would always listen to an episode, man, like there and back. I would purposely save them to listen to them. And I was like, games like books i normally wouldn't have read you know to be honest with you like i years ago i had tried to read like chicago by night and i remember listening to the the chicago by night first edition uh cover you did and the second edition cover you guys did and hearing you and bob talk about the love that you had for that setting both that i take it having lived in the chicago area before and having a larp there and just like how the, this game and these npcs and just how you guys had ran games set in there and it made me want to go and read through it you know what i mean now, i'm not a super huge fan but i read through it you know what i mean and i read the npcs and now 
and it, it kind of like drove that spark for me to read some of these books that I kind of ignored. So I absolutely love it, man. And uh, I'm always like recommending your guys' podcast for, to people who are just like falling in love with the game, you know, and who haven't had the opportunity to read the the ton of books. Now you guys are starting into the V20 with that, right? Yeah. So this week we um, we just did the V20 companion. So we're like technically three books into V20. And um, th it's not going to take a long time for us to finish up uh, the whole line of Vampire. Um, I think we have like 10 or 12 books left. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but um, they've only been back in, in action, so to speak, since um, like 2011, 2012, really. So um, it, it, it takes a lot longer to write and release a book than it does to sit down and review it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're in V20 now. So we're very close to the end. Like by the time we hit January, people are going to be able to go onto the website and, and see every book, you know, as some of them we've done twice. So that's gotta be a huge sense of accomplishment. Are you guys going to, I know you guys have hinted at before thinking about doing dark ages next. You kind of like, uh, in some of the episodes that you've been asked that by listeners, is that the plan right now is to go into dark ages after that? Yeah, so right now I am taking on the huge task of tracking down as many actual physical Dark Ages books as I can um, that money will afford, and we're we're pre we're prepping for Dark Ages in January. Um, you know, we we kind of went back and forth a lot about okay, well, you know, once we're done with this line, what do we do next? Because you know, we are fans of a kind of like world of darkness and white wolf as a whole you know like to me the truth of the matter is i am a white wolf fanboy and i don't want to throw bob under the bus but he's more of a fanboy than i am so um very much we were like do we go werewolf do we you know do mage and you know there's all these different lines and the world is so vast and rich but we were like let's Let's finish with vampires first. You know, that's kind of what brought us to the table. And that's where I think most people are attracted to the game line. So we said, all right, screw it. Modern days are going to be done. Let's start with Dark Ages. And Dark Ages presents its own unique challenges. And that's going to be uh, fun to kind of grapple with as we go along. Yeah, I'm a collector of, of the books myself. And I, I, um, starting to wrap up my dark ages collection but man some of those older dark ages books like the british isles book it's like 90 dollars, 125 dollars just for a paperback book it's just kind of a gut punch i've been holding off on that so there's like a good like six or seven that i'm like i gotta bite the bullet and figure out if i'm gonna want to spend the cash on there or not but yeah i'm excited to listen to it man i'm really am and it's a huge testament to your guys' workhorse ability and that you guys are constantly striving and releasing these episodes every friday man so kudos to you guys to the huge accomplishment that you guys have done and i think it shows by the huge listener base that you guys have well thank you i appreciate that um it is a lot of work and you know for the most part when we got started we were like man we know this game like let's just do some podcasts about it and the truth of the matter is is that when you decide you're going to review a book every week that means you have to read a book every week that's the most difficult that's the most challenging thing about this is that as you're doing that you learn oh i have to understand this on some other level like when you do it simply as a hobbyist like i'm a gamer i read a book i read this over the course of you know six weeks or whatever that's different than going well uh, i've got to review the the dust to dust book tomorrow so i better get reading these last 60 pages and then you know you have to talk about it so yeah, it, it is a challenge. It's definitely more challenging than we thought when we started. But if it's, uh, you know, if a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing right. So and that's one of the things that uh, I personally appreciate about your podcast is that you take this information that you have, uh, you digest it and you give your opinion on it and, and you make sure it's clear. Hey, this is our opinion. You know, you yeah. might have a different one, but uh, this is what we think. and This is how we approach it. And this is how you might be able to use this. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's been, I think, a, a challenge for us is when you sit down and you just chat with your friend and you're like, well, you know, this is kind of just me and Bob just shooting the shit. Um, you know, we don't really we never really factored at the beginning that, like, you know, other people are going to want to interact with you. And so, you know, a lot of people would come to us and they would 
you're like, no, you know, this is wrong or you're, you know, you're right about this, but I don't agree with you about that. And, you know, we had to emphasize, I, I, I felt that we had to emphasize, like, this is just our opinion. You know, we're not, we're not authorities. We're just two guys who've been doing it for a long time. And the, the goal for us was always to share in what we love and not to, you know, tell people like you're doing it the wrong way. And even when we've said like, Hey, if you're doing it this way, you're probably doing it wrong. You know, it's kind of like that, that friendly, you know, jibe, like, Hey, we're all playing the same game, but like, let's think of it from a different perspective. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting people interested and getting people hyped about this game that we love and, you know, just telling everybody like, you know, now we overtly state like, however you do it, that's the right way. Like this is, everything's correct. There's no wrong way. This is just our opinion about this material. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our first break. And when we get back, we're going to, uh, Nathan's going to help us talk about running World of Darkness games on Discord because one of their Patreon rewards they have is a huge Vampire the Masquerade game that they're running on Discord right now. So that's why we invited him here. So stay tuned. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general? that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called White Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by! We hope to see you there. Welcome back, everyone. Um, let's just dive right into this, Nathan. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, and I want to start off with um, really simple. What are the different types of methods a person can play tabletop RPGs in World of Darkness over Discord? And how is it different from playing in person? What makes it you know, unique? Well, yeah, so there are a lot of challenges I've seen. Um, just to uh, give you a little bit of background, um, we, uh, Bob and I, we had never really ran a game online um, up until we started this podcast. And um, basically, we were kind of like, we were blessed. We were blissfully ignorant about like online gaming. And, um, you know, a few years ago, um, when I was really super into Vampire and like just tabletop gaming in general um we had tried like some online chats and the one thing that always kind of stuck out for me was that they're they're they were very very casual your online games with a lot of people were very very casual and there wasn't like sheets and it's kind of like join a chat room and i i named myself todd the Samedi, and that was basically all the effort you had to put into it and then it was kind of just like a lot of people standing around you know quote unquote standing around role playing but there wasn't like an actual game there and so for us we had always done tabletop we'd always had at least five or six people we could find to you know sit down and roll dice and when we started doing this we started meeting a lot of people who they weren't as blessed as we were they didn't have a tabletop community that they could just meet up with every week and sit down and roll dice and, you know, eat junk food and have a good time with. So they were, you know, sort of exploring this world that we didn't understand. And because of our lack of, of like overt knowledge, we didn't like build up to it. We just said, Hey, there's this thing called discord. Like it'd be really easy to use to, to run a role playing game out of. And so we did that we said, let's use this platform and let's figure it out. And, um, when we first started, I, I had done like some cursory online searching for like, you know, programs to use to roll dice. And like, 
um we kind of we didn't even really have that right like there's in discord you have like applications that you can you can embed into your server that like let you roll dice with command prompts and stuff and we didn't know any of that so we just said well, let's just figure it out and go you know as we go and meeting a lot of people that were were knowledgeable about online gaming they sort of introduced us to like these dice rollers and setting up different servers or different rooms in your server to like you know indicate different locations and uh, so we just hit the ground running and i feel like that was a good thing for us because we didn't know the mistakes other people were making so we could kind of make them ourselves but also um we didn't have like these built-in hang-ups like, people that when they're established in something they'll bring their own kind of like hang-ups and they'll bring their own like concerns and issues to to the game and so we didn't have that we just said this is the game come on and join but for us we brought um sort of a, a an in-depth knowledge of of different types of gaming because one thing that we noticed right away if you sit down and you play with a small group of people you'll have your four or five players and your storyteller and we're all face to face so things they roll out differently like your interactions can kind of go back and forth between your in character and your out of character as you're listening to the motivations of the players you're listening to um, the motivations of their characters in real time right it's like a face-to-face -face scenario in a discord game you're separated by the gulf of the internet so you you in most cases are you're not seeing their faces you're not seeing their body language um, and sometimes you're not even hearing their actual voice because that was the other thing too right like some people play this game solely by sitting at the keyboard and chatting some people will do it through the voice um, you know like your, a normal voice program like what we're doing here but rarely is it done through a video scenario like we're doing this podcast right so podcasting and gaming have that correlation too if you're off in a different location and we're not using video we don't see each other's faces so we're not we're not picking up on social cues so that was like the first major thing that we had to figure out as storytellers was figuring out a way to pick up on social cues so i don't know if you guys have, have experienced that but um that was a huge gulf to try to figure out so people um what we didn't understand like when we started uh doing our game we started it like a year and a half ago now i would say um we just said well hey you know we'll let people sit down and type their their words out and if they want to jump into a voice chat um then we can do that but when you do that your your dynamic for your game is completely different right it's totally different than sitting at the table um and you don't know what somebody's doing when they're typing in a computer you know a thousand miles away or a hundred miles away or in the next room and so all of all of your responses all of your interactions are going to be totally different so that's something that for someone who's not used to storytelling online that can be a huge gulf for now we we actually we do two games so we do one that is um you know voice or just text and you're kind of like at your own pace and then i do one that's totally voice i don't i don't do any um text at all um and the reason why i don't do any text at all is because the game that i run i do it once a month and it's a much more traditional minded game i use discord uh, only to post like pictures or um, things that are are not necessarily imperative to um, like verbal interactions or just like you know here's here's a photo of the building you're going into and I post it in the in the chat room and then um, everything else is done over voice because I want the entire group that's involved I want them to be a coterie or a party or whatever you know replace your your personal group here but um that one i only you know we do four hours and then it's over but then the other game that we run for that's huge that's kind of like going on all the time so you know it has its own limitations but also there's people that'll play for like 15 minutes on break and 
they'll role play with other players in a kind of like a real time scenario. So that, that's like a two separate types of games uh, all together, um, and each present their own unique challenges. That 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 that's kind of an interesting point because I was wondering like, what's the one like thing that you see when players join that they don't expect? You know, when they join your Discord, like what should a player expect who has never played in a Discord like text type game that maybe have played in tabletop or maybe have read about tabletop? Because I know you guys are getting you have a lot of people joining who, like you said, aren't fortunate enough to have groups locally to play in and that are looking for, you know, games. So what's one thing that usually is a hard realization for them once they join? Well, people come with their own preconceived notions. And what I mean by that is everybody's already gamed before you know and they gamed before us and we have a way of doing things or we have an understanding of this game or just gaming in general and they have a way of understanding that's going to be different than ours because um we didn't come from an online gaming community we came from a real life gaming community you know we we come from a larp tabletop setting and a lot of people come from their only exposure to this game is doing it online and people that came before us, they did it differently than us. And they did it differently than us in a lot of ways. And um, for some people, they have both preconceived notions on how they should play, as in the mode that they use to emote and how they interact with their storyteller, but also the sort of challenge level of the game. Um, everybody runs their game differently and there's not necessarily a right or wrong but certain people have an expectation that well you know i'm i'm going to come in here and i can kind of like play whatever i want and it's going to be like a you know very like fluffy soft environment and um we we don't we don't believe in that we don't believe in in making the world sort of a soft fluffy environment and for some people, that can become uh, a point of contention, right? Like that can be something where they're like, hey, you know, this doesn't make sense to me that, you know, when I ran down the street and I, I, you know, murdered that group of teenagers, like I don't understand why someone's coming after me. And, you know, we as storytellers have always believed in, you know, ramifications for actions, um, you know, just like in the real world, you're just because you're in a fantasy world doesn't mean that you shouldn't have ramifications for that. And so people's understanding of, of, you know, what a, a response to their actions should be. Um, but also for us as storytellers, the one thing that we've always done from the beginning <laughs> is set people down and try to talk to them and try to interview them, um, like you would a job interview, essentially, not necessarily to go, are you good enough to do this? But do we, can, can we mesh? You know, the, the one thing that I think is the biggest hang up for most gaming communities is everybody comes in and they assume everybody understands things. And the truth of the matter is, it's very rare that anybody does. You come in with your, your notions and people come in with their notions and without communication you you're not ever going to have a good experience yeah that's fair communication plays a big part in it it's a role-playing game and you have to be able to be on the same page with your expectations with uh with everyone players and storytellers alike yeah um we uh we came from larp and larp well i i came from larp um and bob who is the head storyteller of the game um, you know, we, we had, um, you know, 50 to a hundred players at times. And these are players that you're going to be interacting with in a real world scenario. So when people get heated or upset, they're right there in your face. So you get really good at, at gauging people and, um, trying to, you know, put out those fires before they start. And that was something that um, benefited us because we'd had this experience in a real world setting. Um, so we kind of we kind of anticipated, you know, if if you have the wall of the internet behind you or in front of you, um, it's going to be even more difficult 
um, to, to kind of put out those fires. So, you know, we wanted to do that one thing where, Hey, we're taking strangers on, let's sit down, let's talk to them. Let's get a gauge for their understanding of this game and let's move on from there. One thing that we didn't anticipate is that a lot of times people are going to tell you what they think you want to hear. And that can be rough. Oh, when people aren't uh, being honest with them, with what they think is the correct answer but instead trying to tell you what you what they think you want to know right so um one one challenge that we we faced in this uh in this process was um people can hear our opinions before they talk to us (laughs) so um you know we're very we're very forthright we're very overt you know we don't mince words when it comes to this game and like you know kind of how we uh, understand it and so Um, on, uh, a number of occasions we've, we've kind of had to, um, sift through the bullshit as it were, (laughs) and really get to like the, the meat and potatoes of, of what people, you know, a lot of people use gaming to, um, sort of fill a a space where maybe something's not being met in their real life. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to, you have to anticipate that beforehand because, um, it can get problematic, you know, it can get to a point where people are going off the the sort of deep end with their characters and you're trying to maintain you know a sort of continuity in your game and that does require a little bit from the player and a little bit from the storyteller so that can be challenging it sounds like you've used a lot of different uh skills that you learned through years of playing in person to help um as far as going to this online format were there any any kind of tools or uh, skills that you had in a digital environment that were able to help you enhance experience at all? Or what kind of things like those uh, uh, those specific Discord tools that you mentioned before that have you that you've brought in to make the game just a better, more rich experience for everyone? Yeah. So um, with our with our um, our main game. Um, a tool that really helped me was um, learning how to type um, and kind of be like uh, like an impromptu writer immediately Um, because this type of conversating it's easier to keep people engaged because your your brain is working in real time right when you're working with your voice you you're the little stumbles and the little us and ahs, those help you to arrange your words and people interpret that language, right? So in a voice setting, this is a little bit easier, but in a text setting, you know, you have to sit down and sort of arrange your words in a very organized way so that people read them and they're not like, what are you talking about? You know? And so for me, spending a lot of time on the internet in my youth, I think was helpful. Um, I, I didn't necessarily spend a lot of time storytelling on the internet, but, um, that's something if you're going to sit down and you're going to run like a text-based game, you, you need to practice typing. You need to practice typing fast and you need to practice typing concisely. So, um, that can be an issue for some people. However, what I found, um, just interacting with people in general is there's a lot of people that like to write when when you play this game most people are are they're in the process of writing something or making something so you're 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 going to see that a lot of people will challenge you with their descriptions you know uh, i think that um doing this in a text based format on like discord um it's much more uh it's 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 much more um descriptive on on both people's parts um as a storyteller, you want to be clear and you want to be concise and you want to be descriptive, but then your players will describe to you the way that their characters feel in a way that's different than most people can verbalize. And so you'll find that not only are they going to be challenging to you, but they're going to make you better because you want to match their, you know, their output. So that's a skill that you need. Also, um, just, uh, for me, my experiences in sort of the real world job market in a more corporate aspect has helped me immensely because y- your players are are akin to 
a, a customer, right? You want to, you, you're going to be given bad news as a storyteller in almost all scenarios, you're going to be giving bad news to your players, right? You're, you're going to be something bad's going to happen to them. Something is the world of darkness, right? Exactly. So some people are just not very well equipped at, at having bad news presented to them. And so it does behoove you as a storyteller to get good at presenting bad. Um, so, you know, I have a lot of sales experience. And uh, it, you you would say, well, how does sales experience help? Well, it helps because often uh, along with sales, you have to give bad news. <laughs> you have to tell people stuff they don't want to hear. So, um, yeah, you you for a lot of people, they're like, well, I don't want to boil other people down to like a corporate perspective. Well, sometimes you have to. Sometimes there there is a time for um, you know camaraderie and just you know hanging out with your with your homies uh and other times you might have to mow those homies down um with a car and then tell your player like i I just killed your allies sorry i always knew you were a pentex employee <laughs> uh i definitely am um we have many subsidiaries <laughs> uh so one the final question i have and I'm Johnny New Guy, and I just fucking signed up for your Discord game. I've never played on Discord. I really want to play a World of Darkness game. Fucking, I'm all fucking pumped up. I'm ready to go. And if you had one, just one P about the whole experience to make it to where I get the most enjoyment of it, what would your one word of advice be? My one word of advice would be to um, keep your expectations low. Um, and that seems like a really strange thing, doesn't it? Like, don't expect anything. <laughs> Well, the reason why I say that is because of, like for us, we do it as like a reward for people to listen to our podcast, right? And one of the things that we've kind of we've had to face on a number of occasions is people have an expectation about us, about what we're doing. And um it's 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 never really correct. So coming coming into sort of like our arena, we want to tell people like, "Hey, this is something that we put a lot of time and effort into." but we do it because we want to share our joy of the game with people who like our podcast, right? Um, if you're going into another game, they may be doing it for a different reason. You know, they may be doing a casual role play. Um, somebody may be doing like a, you know, a much more aggressive version of, of, of what we do. They may do it completely different. And so I would say in this community period, you want to go into any game or any gaming scenario with no expectation because nobody is doing it for the same reason. You know, everyone has a different purpose. Everyone has a different, uh, um, you know, a different elevator pitch that they're going to present you. And, um, you know, there's, there's some where I, I look at them and I go, oh, this, this doesn't match what I would want to do. Um, you know, some storytellers I've played under and I, I, I like to just experience gaming. So I'll, I'll pretty much play at any table, right? I'll play at a virtual table. I'll play at a real table. If you've got a book and some dice, I'm pretty much there provided I have the time. But with that, I've had to go, I need to take my expectations and I need to, I need to like lower them i need to really draw them down and just have an open mind for whatever the storyteller or the other players bring my way is not necessarily the right way you know my way is just my way so that's the one piece of advice i would give you as a player that when you set out you're going to create a scenario in your mind and it's it's probably going to do you well to just get rid of that scenario right off the bat you know, for us, we uh, we take a very specific um, we we take a uh, we take everyone to task before we get them into the game, and we go, okay, do you listen to our podcast? And if they go, oh no, you know, I just heard one or two episodes, we go, well, maybe this is not for you. Thank you very much. Um, and it, it's important for us to do that. It's important for us as storytellers to go. Sometimes you're a fit, sometimes you're not, and if you don't meet criteria that we need we have to we have to just say no thanks you know we appreciate you coming but you've got to go and that's not something that we we had knowledge of when we started 
that was something we had to learn. Thank you for answering those questions. I appreciate it, man. Like, like if you guys haven't checked it out, and if you are a fan, if you have listened to 25 years of Vampire the Masquerade for a while, and you understand Nate and Bob and want to get in on an awesome game that's set in the LA, uh, the LA by night scene, the original LA by night scene, come by and and hit them up, hit their Patreon up, and uh, get in on it. We have a couple people who we know who are on our Discord who play in it and who have nothing but good things to say. Doc, if you're listening, he's one of them. He tells us some interesting stories about being Sabat in the story. So definitely you guys should check it out. And um, yeah, do you got anything else to say, Nate, before we cut to our break? Um, I mean, I, I would just probably want to reiterate one more time, like, you know, um, if there's one thing that you take away from this, it's that gaming should be something that brings you together with your community and it shouldn't be something that you use as, as a divider. Um, you know, not to, not to be like anybody's dad here, but, um, our tendency is as, as dorks, uh, let's be honest is, um, a lot of times to talk about how great we are at a thing and how not great you are at a thing. Um, instead of going, Hey, this is something that we all enjoy and um you know nobody's wrong for the way that they play unless they're pushing other people out of it like and and i i believe that in all things that i do um you know i'm i'm really big into metal and metal is the same way it's like you know it, well, if you don't listen to the most extreme you're not cool i was like all right cool well you know maybe i'm into a different thing but like i'm still here right so yeah that, that would be the only thing that i would say is that you know use this um, if you're a person who's pushing somebody out of of a hobby, you're only doing yourself a disservice because you're you're limiting the amount of people you have it to interact with. Like, there's nothing wrong with people enjoying the same thing you do. So we're gonna jump into our next break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about uh, someone that we have summoned forth through our Black Magic Black Sabbath coffee drinking rituals. We have found ourselves a new member of the Twin Seas by Night gang, Andrew. I think we've been successful in that, don't you? I think we have. We'll talk about this person when we come back from our break. We'll introduce them. And until then, stand on by. High Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody, to last segment. And as uh, Chris was saying there, we have a very... Big announcement and introduction to make. Now, many of you are already aware that uh, a while back we were looking for someone new to join the Twin City by Night crew to come in and play in a Demon the Fallen Chronicle. It'll be run by our very own Mitch slash Adam slash whatever you may know him as. He's appeared in many of our chronicles. Um, we had an application process, we reviewed everybody, and there was just, well, it was really difficult for us. There was quite a few people that uh, applied, and many who um, were final contenders, but ultimately we had to pick one person. Couldn't have everybody in, sorry. So we're going to be letting a lot of people down right now. Um, yeah. But uh, just give a very warm welcome to Rebecca who is going to be on our channel aka epic botch on the discord for those you don't know sorry what's up becca tell us hey. about you. So how are you doing i'm doing well thank you um feel free to call me becca that's uh, just my more casual name um gosh i've been i've been playing world of darkness for probably the last 11 years and um my very first experience role playing was actually a Werewolf the Apocalypse game. Um, that was very interesting. And then from there, I actually took like a step back and I did D and D, and that's when I actually really started getting into role playing and being more interested in it myself. So, uh, yeah. She has actually been uh, Epic. Has been I, I I don't know if I like I I've always called you Epic. 
I actually mm-hmm. didn't know your name was Becca until like two weeks ago or a week ago. <laughs> uh-huh. Like it's kind of funny too because for those of you who don't know, a little peek behind the curtain, there was there's eight nine of us now in the gang. There was eight of us though before in the TCPN gang, and the discussions we were having while picking, trying to pick someone, were like these epic long. You may, like Andrew can attest. We're like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Everyone come up with a list of their score. We're gonna give a point system, and then we're gonna like go by point system. And then we found out like like there was like like a group that were like really close together in point system. So then we had like these discussions about like weighed all these options, and it was it was and we and it went. Sp- smooth which is kind of weird it took a while but it really went smooth which i was blown away by, andrew because sometimes when the gang all eight try to figure something out because we're like a democracy usually it's like it takes right, a long time the thing go ahead the thing with that is we all know exactly what it is we're looking for in our games and we all have that in common so we knew that there was ultimately there was a couple of different people we could choose from who applied that was going to be able to join us and we were going to be happy with any of them um and which it was just narrowing down and choosing the best fit to come yeah, and def- play with us definitely definitely and epic has becca has been uh admin on our discord for fuck dude since like not too long after we created it right when I, I can't remember. It wasn't too long because we we we, we didn't expect it. Uh, I mean, and I'm not fucking saying this to sound pretentious at all but we just didn't expect as many people to join our discord that joined and so when people start joining and we realized fuck dude like we just we might need some more people to help like keep things under control here becca was one of the three admins that we brought on and and, ha- and has done great and she's listened to our stuff and she's always had feedback for our stuff and kind of like g- given her opinions and everything like that and um yeah man it just it was a hard decision but it was one that we made and i'm happy about it i'm fucking excited every time and you know and i'm going to say this from my perspective because um like i i'm not saying this again to sound like a douchebag but like i started this i started this but because i wanted to run a vampire game online didn't even didn't know shit about actual plays didn't know any of that fucking shit we almost didn't re- you guys have heard the story before almost didn't re- even record it on youtube because slavic and i couldn't fucking figure out to get hangouts to work to switch screens we almost said fuck it and then one of us figured it out and it, it originally started with like five of us and then eventually we brought two one person on and then we brought two more people on and then we brought another person on and now we're bringing on another person and it's always been like this thing to like what can we like we want to we not only do we want to add to the gang but we want to like like better ourselves too and like with the 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 content that we create you know and we want someone who understands like what our overall like vision is and what we do with twin cities by night and i'm not trying to say like we got a mission statement or any shit like that because we're not pentax employees like some people that are on here with us but um like we we myself real quick (laughs) (laughs) i i did not know about um the concept of, of actual plays until I heard of Twin Cities by Night. Uh, I it actually didn't I didn't know that was a thing. So um, you know, give yourself some credit in that regard too. Um, that's how out of touch we are. Like I, I didn't know that the community even existed uh, before your podcast. So, well, that's very humbling. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, w- let's let's give Rebecca here a chance to talk and tell us a little bit more about you the people who are listening you know what um besides just your gaming experience you know just tell them a little bit more about who you are and what you like and why you wanted to play with us wow okay so actually a lot of my hobbies do include playing lots of different games um i'm currently running a D game and an exalted game um, in person and they're both just so much fun i love the people that i I can actually get to hang out with um, in that setting. So that's great. Um, It does take a lot of my time with the planning and doing that, but other hobbies that I tend to have, um, I actually like to play music. Um, I went to school and I got a a BA in music specifically. So um, that's another thing I like to do. Um, It's always one of those things when people ask you and I'm like, I don't know. I do stuff. Um, I just do stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. I kind of put you on the spot there. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, mostly, yeah. It's I, I played too many games is what it feels like. But no, it's great. And you know, I've li- I've been listening to you guys for probably the last almost about a year. 
I don't know, it's been a while. Um, but my first introduction to Twin City by Night was my every other Saturday group that plays D&D called The Chosen Ones. I think 2017, we did a summer where we took a break from D&D and we did like one shot of World of Darkness. And Chris being the good person of going out and inviting anybody to join the community who does World of Darkness and just building it up. Like that was my first introduction to it. And I was like, oh, okay, what's, what's this Twin Cities by Night about? And I had no concept of podcasts where people do actual plays. Um, and so it was like a very slow, gradual introduction. And then I found out that you guys had Discord. And I was like, oh, it, it took me a while to warm up to the idea. And then I joined and you guys were just, everybody there is just so great. And it's a fun community to be a part of. And I'm really glad to be a part of it. Be prepared to be reached out to by a Starbucks representative, and they're going to require an address so you can get your sponsorship cold brew, lifetime sponsorship. They're just going to drop a bunch of fucking boxes on your front porch, but within them lies the black magic of coffee, cold brew. You are expected to drink at least five a day. Uh, okay. so you can get <laughs> wow. You can, you can become awakened. You can become a time age. Just like I us. Just, you yeah. should know, though, however, that uh, none of this is actually required because I don't fulfill it either. <laughs> and when he does he gets in car accidents listening to fucking 25 years of vampire the masquerade and it's just pretty intense dude but no no seriously in all seriousness it's awesome uh becca has been on our discord and she actually ha uh, like i always see her like giving people advice about games because i'll ask questions we have people jump in there and be like hey what would i do in this situation and one thing that um that i think becca has that i severely lack in discord is the fact that you can tell she really like when someone's like, hey, I have this concept, or hey, I have this idea for a story, she'll sit there and listen, you know, and you could tell that she's listening, you know what I mean? And where I feel sometimes on Discord or just online, sometimes I'll come across uh, maybe like not 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 warm enough, and, 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 and I really get this impression, like she'll listen, she'll give ask questions, give critiques, or give strengths, or give advice, and everything like that, and that's a good thing, dude. So I'm glad that you're here, and I'm also glad that that perspective and that, 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 kind, of, um, that kind of insight that you have, now we can, maybe um maybe maybe tweak some things within twin cities by night you know what i mean and now have another voice you know to where we do it so i'm, I'm totally fucking stoked for that uh everyone should give a congrats to epic botch aka becca uh when they hear this shoot her congrats uh and now she's part of the gang and not only does that mean she's going to be part of this demon the fallen game that mitch the man of many voices is going to run but she'll be part of like fucking anything that pops up dude just like when we do anything when someone has an idea for a game it comes up and she'll be part of the pool and uh, yeah, she'll add her insight. So welcome, Becca. It's seriously awesome to fucking have you join us. Every time that a new player joins Twin Cities by Night, it fucking excites me, and I feel like even more motivated. It's just like an extra boost of cold brew in my veins, man. And it was like that when Andrew joined for the Ultimate Evil, and it was like that anytime we got a new fucking player. So, congrats, and and um, from rest of the gang too, congrats. So we're gonna move on into some things that we have coming up, but before. We do. I want to get a shout out to our new Patreons. Uh, matter of fact, Nate, I gave you a shout out last. Uh, Brian Diaries for the awesomeness, and we we appreciate that, bro. And um, this is fucking mind boggling what you said, by the way, about the actual play thing. And I want to say seriously say that made my day. You know what I mean? And you being here as a guest also has, dude. So thank you for that. Well, it's it's been my pleasure. Um, I mean, like I said, we we kind of we didn't do any investigating before we started. We were like, we play vampire. Let's do a podcast. And it turns out there's other people that um, like that stuff, too. So uh, that's really been the best. The, like this two year journey of doing this podcast, the best part of it has been finding out that there is a community and there are people who enjoy the stuff that we enjoy and we can collaborate and um, there's nothing I think worse than people who kind of like go behind each other's backs and do, you know, like we, we've, we've been in communities before where, you know, people are backbiting and they're trying to get ahead on top of each other. And like, we all do this because it's fun and we want to make this something that's, that's enjoyable for other people. And, you know, the fact that we live in a world now where, a bunch of friends can get together and sit down at a table and roll some dice together and other people can enjoy that. Like that's ridiculous. That's just awesome. So yeah, we're, we're more than happy to 
you know, talk to anybody and, and just collaborate as much as possible. So, you know, the good point about the backbiting, you say for all you new content creators in the world of darkness scene, I have a reality check for you. There's not Cristal waiting for you around the corner with the puff daddy kind of lifestyle, man. So it's like, do this for the sheer fact that like people will enjoy it and that that's what you should do it for. You're not going to get rich doing this, just saying it right now, but I mean, you know what I mean? I just like to break it to you. You'll, guys, get, you know, you'll get rich in, in other ways. You'll get rich in, in spirit, you know, you'll get rich in, in heart, you know, that's yeah, uh, exactly. Do it because you want to have fun. Bring, yeah. Yeah. Because it brings you joy. Exactly. Uh, so I'd like to give a shout out to our five new Patreons, Ariel Lee, Ariel, AKA hum, AKA our changing the lost fan who now is going through wars on fire and is saying that she thinks coyote is something precious, which is like, <laughs> you know, like fucking right now, Alex is if you have a, a really new Zealand twisted view on fist, what precious you know? is. Then yeah, sure. Coyote <laughs> is precious. Mm hmm. Uh, I wanted to thank Ariel, who became a Patreon. She's her username on her Discord is Hum. She basically, I was saying before, like I kind of go through these ebbs and flows when, when as a content creator, meaning like, um, like I kind of like will start beating myself up a little bit, or or stuff will start bugging me, and then I'll have a talk with someone, or I'll find something out new, and I'll just like shoot for the stars. I'll get motivated, and I'll just try to like. It'll just give me like this new fuel, like this little extra burst. And I was going through one of those periods and Hum just had this random conversation with me in our general chat of our Discord where she was talking about her experience as a professional, um, like a promoter, like a sales promoter. Like she uses like social media to like help out restaurants and stuff like that, get noticed. And she like really had this like in-depth talk and just let me pick her mind about using Twitter to like help promote stuff. And she was telling me about like different hashtag uses and talking about like Hootsuite, which is a tool. And it was just like, was really patient and was nice enough to sit there and let me like, give me this advice and like this tutorial on what to do. And so like, even if you are a content creator and if for, you want to find out like more about that, I would say even jump on our discord and like talk to her. Her username is H U M hum. And, and I'm sure she'd be able to help you out. But not only was she helpful and gave me like that boost of uh, inspiration, she, she also became a Patreon. And for that, I, I, I want to thank her uh, sincerely. She always listens to our stuff. Um, she's just, she, she has valuable feedback and I really appreciate that. Uh, next I'd like to, pre, uh, to thank Ian Mueller, then Jake Campbell, Sage Stafford. Sage Stafford has been there since like I got on Twitter, dude. She is part of a D and D actual play podcast called the venture maidens who they're pretty, I think they're pretty well known, like, um, uh, all female D and D actual play podcast. And she's like really been like super nice to me and actually had me before, like, 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 like right when I first got on Twitter, had me be, um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name had me be a guest on some dude who's like in the D and D community on his podcast, talking about the world of darkness. And she didn't know shit about me. Like she just got to know me and she was nice enough to be like, Hey, I'd like you to go on there. And, and I was like, that can, I don't fucking know. Okay. I get, you know what I mean? Like, who am I? But she was always been super helpful. Her and her boyfriend have been great. And, um, yeah, just thank you also Sage for becoming a Patreon. And then finally, uh, Todis, who uh, I don't want to butcher your last name, but um, he's been listening to our stuff from day one, and I really appreciate that too. So all you guys who are Patreons, thank you again. It means a lot. So what do we have coming up? So we had to reschedule Hunter, the Hunters Hunted 2. We had a player who couldn't make it. Uh, oh, we're a little sad. I'm having a blast playing that game. But the uh, uh, little silver lining on the gray cloud is on the 28th. And on the 4th of November, we're going to be playing Twin Cities by Night Dread. So we're going to have two sessions in a row. Man, Andrew, I'm fucking loving Dread. Uh, I think we left on kind of a cliffhanger. <laughs> I don't want to like spoil, but like, uh, like, look, like I said, it's not a cliffhanger when they literally go over the edge. Yeah, yeah, that's all that's I gotta say. Not a <laughs> it's not a cliffhanger. That story is really getting steam, man. Now, like one thing I was talking to Joaquin about this the other day, who Joaquin plays Katow, has been like there since day one playing. We were saying how like. <clears throat> about with the story how a lot of it's just been the characters separated maybe a couple will get in contact with each other but a lot of it has been them doing their own thing and kind of like me being able to tell more of the story because they kind of have their own motivations and they're not really like a quote unquote quarry or whatever but like now it seems and i don't know if andrew can attest to this or not because he plays in it but it seems now more that like organically they're being drawn together 
and which the timing is perfect because like you can really tell like the story's starting to pick up steam and so i feel like it's naturally happening like for their own reasons that they're kind of getting drawn together in a way and you saw that in this last three podcast episodes that we had which was was i've been really looking forward to and i'm really looking forward to what happens afterwards and of course i planned it to go kind of a completely different way and it didn't go the way i thought but not in a bad way and in a way a lot of stuff came across i feel more like scary because uh a lot of it's still unknown and and, and um I, th- I think there was some pretty good scenes in there and and are you still having fun there andrew playing in it or what yeah i i'm enjoying the game it's one of those things where uh it's a very dark character that i'm playing and I'm enjoying being able to portray something like this uh, in a tasteful way. So, yeah, the character of Lenny is definitely an interesting concept, and all, all the characters for the most part. And it's really cool and seeing like everyone kind of grow into it. And I can't believe like what we that was our 11th session that we had for it. And usually that, that's really long for us because I think like what was Wars? Wars was like 11 or 12 sessions or something like that. So this is going to probably out far be longer than a lot of our character concepts and so or a lot of our story arcs so very interested to have two sessions in a row on that really because i'm getting into the meat of a lot of plot by the way that like i've had planned like two years ago two and a half years ago and now it's like finally starting to touch a lot of what um is happening in dread originally was going to be like side stories and and twin cities by night like negligence and homecoming and and like now i just kind of like made it its own story which is actually works out way better and i'm happy i'm happy it worked out that way so check that out keep your eyes open for it on the 28th and on the 4th that's gonna be six episodes of the podcast of that in a row so i'm really excited for that then we got changeling the lost on the 18th and fucking shit balls dude i am loving changeling the lost vanity man like seriously man i is gross but i'm fucking loving it dude i felt like that that last session man especially you playing isabel and manny and slavic uh like 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 the the the, with you people who are not in the hedge like i felt that was fucking awesome man and again like just the way that adam is using a fucking ogre (laughs) like who has no like fucking like social skills and is all awkward to like promote this story is fucking rad man and and um i'm really enjoying that man especially the scene you had in the club i felt that was like some really deep exploration of your character there man i want to give you kudos to that too definitely that was an interesting scene yeah it's been fun i felt it was important to uh just kind of show something a little less like overtly supernatural considering the other things that were going on so i brought it up to adam on the side and like hey let's let's run a scene kind of like this and he was like yeah cool and then we just ran with it and it worked out yeah that's a cool thing too i like about what adam does is is that he'll i mean it's like that tabletop games too and everything like that where you're like hey i want i would like to explore this with my character and he'll be like okay and you don't know what's going on but he'll like set these scenes up to where you can kind of explore more of your character and he doesn't really he's not like railroady at all and and just so you know and i've said this before and i'm saying this again this is adam's first time ever still storytelling a game period like period ever st- storytelling a game and, and what he's doing, like second game that he's ever been in in his second game he's ever been in and he's doing it on doing a fucking good. Po- yeah and he's doing it on a podcast to where the public sees he gets nervous as fuck he says he gets nervous still a little bit but he is doing like really good and like the the techniques that he has far surpasses like shit that i do man and i actually like like i like techniques that he has and i'm like man how can i fucking do that you know what i mean and um it's great dude and i'm having a blast and i hope he runs he's talking about and I don't want to say this is official yet um, because it's, we have a queue of games that we have planned to run. We have, and, and, and um, you're going to hear about this, Becker. You'll start hearing about the queue. But he has his game that he's talking about running because a little Twin Cities by Night secret. We're all fans of Young Guns and Young Guns 2. It's just like a corny thing. We all love the fucking two movies. They're fucking awesome. Um, and he's talking about running a Werewolf the Forsaken game that takes place in that t- same time period uh, in New Mexico. And you're going to be like um, cattle hands working like during a cattle war. And you're going to have to like, and it's, I'm just like, oh, fuck, dude, please run this game. Cowboy like, Werewolf? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. And I'm like, and and, and it's not going to be Apocalypse. It's going to be Forsaken. But just the way he explained it, I'm like, oh, and he's like throwing all these young gun like fucking quotes and shit. And I'm just like so fucking excited because I'm like, I want to yeah, play out. Yeah, I was hooked. I mean, I'll stop my games. I'm like, I'm not running shit. Like, he's running this. I'm going to fucking play in it. Like, I'm so excited. And if it's any, um, if it's going to be like how he's handling vanity, dude, I'm 
fucking sold. And he's already like, does anyone know any good books about cattle wars? And so he's all like trying to find like books about that time period because he's already starting to research it. So I think it's a go. Maybe might be ran after one of our uh, demon games that are going to be coming, but we'll see. And then next month we're not going to have uh, a Brian Diaries because there's some super secret shit going on that everyone already fucking knows about pretty much. So it's not super secret, but we will be recording Slavic's special. Or was, it, was it Slavic Snow <laughs> Slavic's Snowflake Special Part Two? Even more witty <laughs> what action one liners and what, what he's gonna it? he called it uh Slavic Super Badass Snowflake Sequel Sucka. <laughs> yeah, Sucka, and it's gonna be wow. yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> insane because he's his goal, and so far everyone's committed is that. We're going to have all nine Twin Cities by Night members playing in this. And what it's going to be is going to be total where chaos. someone it's gonna total be total chaos, chaos. and someone else is going to create your character for you. And for those of you <sighs> listening who don't know, Slavic Snowflake Sp- Special is a comedy game. He just runs. We don't take it too seriously. We drink during it. And he just goes berserk. Last game had like had Putin, Donald Trump, McDonald's, fucking Necromancy Katanas. Uh, and a whole bunch of other shit. So it was really fun. And Andrew, or Adam, I hope Adam plays a gargoyle again because what was his gargoyle's name? I can't remember, but he had this gargoyle that was like an action movie star and had like the spiky blonde hair and sunglasses of that guy who goes to diners and dives or whatever. And he's like, and he kept doing these CSI like like one liners at it the was perfect really, time. It was really cheesy. It that, was, that's it, the point of the game, though. So. It's cheesy, and we'll release that April's first. So, because it's super serious, and we take so it seriously. That's, that's what we got next month. <laughs> yeah, that's what we got next month. So, stick along. If you guys would like to follow us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM. You can find us on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. You can find us on Discord in the description. And we're done. You guys got anything to say before I let you all go back to your normal lives? Um. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed the absolute shit out of it. Um, and if you are ever running a game and you're looking for an extra player and you're not reaching out to the community, let me know. Um, I am a gamer and I love to play games. Uh, also, if you haven't heard our podcast, if you're interested in it, just go to utilitymuffinlabs.com. That's all one word. And you can find all of our podcast stuff there, all of our our visual creations and all of our other goofy stuff. So, muffins um, too. Yeah. uh, yes, um, we, we do provide muffins, although, um, we don't currently have any bakers. So, you know, we're, we're working on it. Um, but yeah, just go, go to our website. Um, cause it, it'll lead you to our Twitter, our discord, everything. And just so you know, Nate, if yeah. I ever do get cancer, I'm going to have my wife play your voice. Or like intercom system wow. where people put flowers around me, so you can be the last thing that I hear before I if leave you have, this earth. If you ever get cancer? I think you just cursed yourself. That <laughs> that took a really dark turn. <laughs> it's the world of darkness, bro. Don't judge me. It's my art. All right, okay. everyone. It's getting weird. <laughs> I'm gonna drink cold brew. Leave me I alone. Pre- I want to talk to my friends. Hold on, you got something to say? He's about to jump in. Are we gonna have a moment right here, Nate? No, oh, I was God. just going to say, I, I I bring the best out in people. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you for checking us out. Leave me alone. I'll talk to you guys later. The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The Central District is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire Districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city?
Neon Masquerade. The Demon's Mirror. Thirteen Candles. Three Chronicles Running Through the Undead Veins of the City of Angels. The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to eorpodcast.com and search the Duets tag to find out more.